everybody. Welcome back, everybody, of the Pokemon Go universe. Today is June 14, 2020. I am your host, Luis Palacios, with my co-host, Chris. Hello, it's your boy, Pokemon Trigger, please. Oh, yeah. Chris, how's it going, my good man? Oh, it's going good. I got so many tournaments going on. Dude, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually winning for once. It's awesome. Yay, Chris. Winning with those matches, well... We're going to be talking about some pretty interesting news. This is the Purify Podcast, and of course, I forget to do something in my intro, you know? <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, yes, love the hat, Manny, yes, because I am wearing my Mystic hat today. Pretty cool, pretty awesome. I have another one with all my pins, but um, it's my car, and I'm just too lazy to get it right now. <laughs> uh. So yeah, we are here once again to talk all things Pokemon Go related news, updates, and of course ranting because we like to rant about Pokemon Go in general. So if you're here on the stream, make sure that you of course give a like to the video, uh, subscribe to the channel, and if you're on Twitch, follow. That's actually pretty nice. And then if of course if you're on podcast feeds, make sure you listen through the end because we have some very important news to talk about. Uh, and some very cool things happening in the next few days. But anyways, before we start with all of that, we're going to go ahead and recap our events of the week. So uh, one of the things that uh, we, uh, we just want to go ahead and see is like, Chris, have you gotten any shinies? Yes. yes. Uh, I got one I really needed on um, right after Patrat hour. Uh, I ended up getting a shiny Talo, Ooh. and then after that, um, yesterday night, I got a really big shiny coughing, a uh, like level 33 one. I was like, what? Why? It's a beautiful shiny. I love the pink clouds. Nice, so, nice. nice. So I have gotten Talos before. I had like two Talos back in the day, and this was the one that's not a shiny one it had from the egg, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But for today, or actually from the week... I was actually pretty shinyless for uh, for a while there. Uh, however, uh, recently, actually, it was Friday night. I was coming back from my friend's place. I was just hanging out with them. And all of a sudden, I opened the game. There was a light response in one of my uh, local parks or local uh, Pokestops. And I get a shiny Rattata. Oh, okay. It was actually a Lowland Rattata, too. It was one of the shinies I didn't have before. So it's actually pretty nice. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I like it's it. pretty good. Did I get this Benonet during the week too? Uh, that was probably last um, week. I think. Yeah, I I'm really jealous of that guy. <laughs> yeah, I got it last week. I didn't talk about it. I think I remember not talking about it. But oh well. Yeah, shiny shiny Rattata is actually pretty nice. It's actually one of the alone and shinies, and I didn't, haven't gotten yet. Just like a lot of you do. But uh, I think it's pretty good so far. I mean, not too much in the shiny department aside from the bronze and from bronze and raid or I don't know the the, the thing that we have on Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. would you would think that I know the name of it, guys. Sometimes <laughs> I do forget. Spotlight hour eventually. things. Yeah, eventually. eventually. Yeah, I'll, eventually I remember the names. You know. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's usually our, at least our small little tips or things that we happen. So shiny is all around. No shiny is around in my overworld, overworld right now. Let me check. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not for me at least. I got like four different Pokemons that could have been shiny and nothing was shiny for me. So. Uh, it's random by me. It is? Wow. In the game at least. Yeah, well. <laughs> weather conditions in Pokemon Go never affect anything that happens in the real life. Because when you're in sunny weather for some reason it's raining, you're like, what? <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, shinies all together. So I guess we got a pretty good, decent, small little shiny oh, yeah. hands for the week. So that's pretty nice. Uh, aside from that, Chris, what has your champion research been coming along so far? Legit, the only thing I've done so far is I worked to get that uh, Galarian Meowth. Okay. And then I still need to do 11 raids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've taken my sweet time. Yeah, me too. So far, uh, I got it up to t five raids, so I need ten more to finish. I haven't even evolved all the Pokemons, and then both researchers are just sitting there right now. Since Same. there's no completion time for this, it's kind of like the lazy back throwback thing that we're just waiting for, you know, for us to like raid hour or something to just like go off and just like get as many shinies as possible. Which actually leads me to my next segment, uh, which is the mm -hmm. Latios and Latios special raid weekend that we talked about last week. The announcement was actually made uh, 
pretty early, but then the weekend came around, and now we're actually on it. So you can actually read Latios and Latias. Yay! I'm guessing you haven't done anything, haven't you? I've rated one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't. I, I need to read more, but I, 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 I've only read one. I haven't read anything. I haven't actually had the chance to actually go out and play and read anything. I was less like, why? I mean, like, how much more time do we even have? Tomorrow, uh, Monday at 1 p.m., I think. So, yeah. It You're will not be... doing on my lunch break. I don't know. It's actually, actually, no, no. It's, it's ending in a day and an hour. So I'm guessing 9 p.m. local time. Okay. So which, I can do some after work, though. Yeah, so which actually finishes off the recaps, because uh, remember that Sacrum is coming out back on Tuesday uh, at mm -hmm. 1 p.m., so that will be pretty nice, pretty sweet new Pokemon Pokedex entry. I'll definitely be out during the time to get some uh, going, because luckily enough, I'm actually off of work this entire week, so... I'll be able to play around, get some things done, and you know, do some Lucky. extra streams and everything. Hey, I wanted, I, I need that break. I mean, work has been stressful since this whole co uh, pandemic happened. So, uh, luckily mm -hmm. enough, I've been able to get that approved, and now it is. So, that's what we got. That's what we got. Very nice. Very <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, uh, luckily, um, Latios and Latios will be here for another day. So maybe tomorrow, if I have some time, I'll probably do it. Um, it's gonna be a lazy day for me tomorrow, definitely. For many reasons. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, definitely um, just go out, raid, and raid as much as possible. If you listen to the podcast, uh, make sure that Latios and Latios, if it's a shiny you haven't gotten. Uh, we did go over the shinies, the, how many shinies we had last week. So you guys probably don't need to know that about now anymore. So, uh, all right. I'll give you a hint, zero. <laughs> <laughs> I got, well, one of each, but one of them was a trade, and the other one were legit caught from research breakthroughs so it wasn't even raids i i was the, i was back then i did a lot of raids for uh for latios not comparing to one of our community members where you know they rated like insanely amount and never got the shiny <laughs> oh my god um, i didn't go as hard yet yeah no it, it's still kind of nice to get the shiny but it's also kind of nice to just sit back back then we didn't have remote rating either so it wasn't like a big yeah. it was a big issue back in the day if we wanted to get rated going so yeah. that being said of course since that's are mostly the recaps that we have, let's t let's dive into today's research topics, which are actually a lot going on this week. Uh, a lot of announcements from Niantic and Pokemon Go itself. Uh, but we'll go ahead and go ahead and talk about the first research topic here, which is actually expanding Niantic's wafer access and in-game rewards. As you guys know, we actually be talked about what uh, a badge in the Pokemon Go. That tells you the wafer, like the submissions you do, you know, how you help your community, uh, what was accepted and everything. So if you actually go into the game right now, you can actually see it. And there is a wafer badge that you can actually earn. Uh, goes from 50 to 500 to 1,000 submissions and agreements actually happen. So that is a lot, actually. Um, I have four. <laughs> Which, that's when I started doing wafer when it first came out. After that, mm -hmm. I kind of like fell off from that, and I was just like, oh, okay, I'll, I seen that people are actually submitted and everything. And but I do have to say that the wafer um, has actually helped a lot of players, especially the rural players, oh, yeah. uh, myself included, because back in my in my day, uh, my neighborhood didn't have the poker stops that I have now. And then all of a sudden, I start seeing one poker stop and then two poker stops. I was like, okay, so somebody else in my community plays Pokemon Go. This is amazing. <laughs> I feel like I should have at least one Wayfair, but I guess I don't. <laughs> Whoops. Well, I mean, you can go ahead to go to the link and get the submissions going. You do have to go through the process of testing to see if you actually get approved to be a Wayfair reviewer. Um, okay. But after that, it's pretty easy to actually get reviews done. It is like, like a lot of people call it like homework. They go, You go in, you review it, you see if it's actually a good spot, you know, lo good location, if it's not duplicate, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. you check the area and see if it's not, like, not under any of the private places, like, you know, businesses or, um, communities and everything like that. So, uh, you know, overall it's, it's a pretty fair, easy program, but this, this is what we're going to be actually talking about today. Um, that it empowers, of course, eligible Pokemon Go players and English players to review and ultimately decide on which interest of points of, or points of interest get added on a platform. Um, they are extending this to Pokemon Go players now to level 38 instead of 40. Before, it was just a full level 40 agreement. 
to or you have to be at least level 40 to be actually able to submit or review Wayfair applications. However, because of this a small little change, now level 38 players and English engines level 10, which is actually I think it was 12 back in the day, uh, will be able to dominate the same way. So it's kind of easy to get to that point. Of course, you know, grinding to level 38, still not an easy task. But, no. you know, if you go through what Pokemon Go has actually implemented in in experience gains, it, like hitting level 38 isn't really that hard anymore. You just got to go through a couple of months. I want to say maybe through three months of hardcore gameplay if you want to get in there. If you want to do casually, then, of course, it's going to take you a little bit longer. Uh, I was going to say, if you're not paying, it will take a tiny bit longer. But, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they, they have plenty of events right now. Oh, yeah, definitely. And um, many more come to come, of course. Pokemon Go is, is, is nearing its four-year anniversary. I'm sure they have more things planned. Uh, and there's definitely more things that you'll be able to do if you want to get into um, submitting Pokestops for your community, of course. Uh, aside mm -hmm. from what I was actually mentioning, they have added the reward medals and, and in-game, so you'll see how many submissions actually get uh, approved and everything. It's just like the 50, 500, and 1,000 that I mentioned. So if you really are a completionist, like many people are in this, in this, in this game, uh, make sure you check out Wafer because that's going to be an empty batch if you don't start doing it soon. <laughs> uh, it's probably going to stay like that for me for a while, but I will definitely start making some submissions and see how my progress is on that. Uh, Chris, are you going to start and implementing? Yeah, yeah, I, I figure as much. <laughs> uh, I, I like I like having good badges, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, definitely. It's actually a pretty nice badge. Unfortunately, since I don't have more than four, I can't see the bronze medal anymore. Uh, oh, well. Oh, well. Either way, that is uh, pretty nice from Niantic to help us, you know, get some... Uh, I want to say motivation. It's a good motivation for people to just say, hey, you know, there's something in game that awards me from doing this. Let me go ahead and do this mm -hmm. right now. So um, even though it's a little tedious because, I mean, getting to a thousand agreements isn't really that easy. Uh, but there's always submissions every day. There's always um, ways to make sure that you can expand the community, especially the rural communities. Like aside from the ones that I have right now around my house, there's not many that actually been approved around my neighborhood. And I've seen some that could actually like happen if people yes. were to agree to it. Uh, but it's just that requirement to make sure they see if other people can actually, you know, see the same thing, you know. So uh, Chris, what about you? Do you see any potential like wafer dominations that you may actually be able to do? The only one I've done so far, and this is really stupid but i tried doing the dumpster behind my work <laughs> um to see if i could get a pokey stop at my work yeah. um obviously it didn't work but um i'll keep my eyes out for sure oh, yeah I mean, yeah i'm pretty happy with the pokey stops around me right now but i'm sure i can get some more i'm same same um right now i, I mean whenever i go to work or anywhere i'm home at least i have some pokey stops that i can spin if i need to do a daily spin or anything extra so it's kind of nice it's kind of cool, but uh, I know we I can actually help out more the community that way. So I'll try to see if I can get into Wafer just a bit tiny more to see if, um, as I was saying, just make sure that we can help out our community out there. So, yeah. So okay. that's Wafer. Uh, make sure, guys, if you're listening, make sure that you check them out because or check it out because it's just it's, an, it's nice. It's pretty nice. <laughs> so um, you want to at least talk about what's the next uh, topic right there real quick, Chris? Oh, yeah. Pokey stop scanning. This sounds really <laughs> interesting. I saw a little bit about it. Yeah. So as we mentioned before, in one of the blog posts that uh, Niantic or Pokemon Go went and did, uh, Pokemon scanning is actually something that you can now do in Pokemon Go. Now, how does it work? It's a little convoluted. I want to say uh, I kept re trying to read it and I was like, how, okay, so how do I do this? How do I do that? You know, things like that. Uh, but, okay, so I'm just going to read what the help center of Niantic and Pokemon Go has actually posted in there. And if I, again, if I sound like a robot, it's because I'm trying to make sure that you guys understand. So Pokestop scanning is an opt-in feature that lets qualified Pokemon Go trainers record a stream of images of the po of Pokestops and gyms and provide related information to Niantic, including time and location of the recording, how your phone moved while you were recording, and some uh, general characteristics of your device. Information gathered during Pokestop scannings allows Niantic to generate ac accurate, dynamic 3D maps of the real-world objects, improving our understanding of how virtual objects persist. 
uh, how they grounded in specific locations and where they are related in to each other. Basically, uh, devices will better understand what they are looking in order to augment reality in real time and allow Niantic to explore and deliver new types of AR experience, which require an accurate and up-to-date 3D map of the world. So basically, what you uh, the steps that they actually have on this and scanning a Pokestop, you will go to the Pokestop or the gym related to the to where you want to uh, scan, and then you will click the upper right corner. I think I can show it right here. So you will go ahead and put the upper right corner, that little like uh, sign that says to the right, and then you will click, you know, contributions to the Pokestops, add a picture, edit, and and then you will scan a Pokestop. Of course, right now it says that I'm too far away from the Pokestop to contribute to the scanning. However, you will be able to scan it and then you're opting to the feature via your uh, on-screen prompts and your first time recording a scan. Uh, tap the record button to start scanning and then keep the object within the frame and slowly walk around the object if possible. Tap unload, upload later or upload now to upload a Pokeball scan. Now, basically you will go around, if you guys can see me of course in the stream. Uh, you will go around the actual like object that has the qualification to the Pokestop and then just scan it around to make sure that you have a good understanding. Now, I haven't done this yet. However, it's kind of a neat feature to just map out our world. As you guys know, AR or augmented reality is something that Pokemon Go has implemented since day one and has actually expanded in that to many different ways to say, hey, you know, we want to actually feel like we're in a in the real world, but with the game that we love the most. So if we can actually do this and expand to Niantic's goal to see the world in a more brighter and fun way, instead of just, you know, seeing the same thing over again, or if you want to actually contribute, uh, you can always scan that Pokestop and then send it to Niantic and see if it's something that they will expand in their feature, you know, AR technology out in the world. So it's kind of nice, kind of cool. Um, but it seems interesting how they they will like use this in later later implementations and, and of their game magic I want to say. <laughs> uh, but Chris, uh, what is it? What do you think about this so far? My biggest hope is that the three D that they're using for it looks really really good. Mm -hmm. um, if it does, this is going to be really really hype. And yeah. I can't wait to see the Pokestops that people scan. Yeah, uh, but we'll see. Definitely, definitely. Um, I think this also will implement things like, you know, in one of the blog posts back in when they were saying, hey, we're going to want a brand new feature for Pokemon Go Fest and everything. I think that's going to actually implement that because unfortunately, since... Yeah, because right now we can't go out and play Pokemon Go or go to Pokemon Go Fest. We have the dates of what it's actually going to be. We don't have any more news, unfortunately, about that. But mm -hmm. I know that they wanted to actually experience where we are and see the virtual size of, you know, what a game can look like in virtual reality or augment reality, however you want to see it. But that's really, I feel like that's like the first step to start on a new um Pokemon Go experience in our in at least in our game specifically because I know that they want to do the same for all the, all the other games but this is the way that they want to do it for the game in Pokemon Go so we'll see yeah we'll see we'll see how things like go but it seems pretty exciting we just need to know a little bit more before we actually start getting into it will I do it I mean there are a couple of places I don't want to do it because I mean like a neighborhood my neighborhood has the two Pokestops that are just inside the neighborhood I kind of don't want people to see how the neighborhood looks like so <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> definitely up to more, of course. So, Chris, what about our next topic for today? Let me take a look. Mm -hmm. So, it's going to be the Pokecoin earning revamp. Yes. Yes. The only thing I hate is that it's back down a little bit. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's the only thing I don't like. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, Pokemon Go has been testing, as you guys know, the Pokemon, uh, the Pokecoin system uh, since, I want to say, last month. Uh, they wanted to, well, the last, yeah, last month, actually. Um, they wanted to revamp it, Aramoy Pokecoins, do different stats. We were all raging about it because it was just, like, extra five coins. 
uh, to the existing 50 that we had, and we had to do insanely amount of tasks to reward us for five, five extra Pokestops or five extra coins in game. Um, so they listened to the community and they wanted to uh, respond to that to that feedback. So this is what they came up with, and this is how they revamped in it, and this is why I call it a revamp. <clears throat> So when this update goes live, the following changes will be implemented. The maximum number of pocket coins earned per day will be 50. So we're going back to 50. No more extra pocket coins after that. Uh, the number of pocket coins earned for the different gyms uh, will be six per hour. So you will actually be able to earn more pocket coins than what they were originally thinking. Before using six hours to earn the pocket coins, you will earn it in you know in a two hour period or something. So it was actually taking longer to earn the pocket coins. Yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. Luckily, you know, it's only a testing period, so they wanted the feedback from the book from the um, <clears throat> trainers. Oh, they got it quick. They yeah. got it quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, the number of uh, the maximum number of Poké coins earned per day from defending gyms will be thirty. So instead of earning fifty coins in a gym, you'll be earning thirty, which still okay. Uh, but we're so used to the fifty that we feel like it might actually be a little slap in the, in the end of the day. However, this is why they raised it a little bit. Yeah. yeah, so this is why they actually said 30 for gyms. The number of, number of Poké coins earned per day for completing the feature activities in today's view will be 20. So 30 for just defending a gym and 20 from completing the task. Um, so far, it's actually been doing okay. I haven't seen anybody out there raging about it anytime soon. Um, however, it's kind of like just splitting the type of task that we've been doing instead of just like earn it all in one feature, uh, which was the, just the gym defending part of it. Um, but it also been implemented that the tasks are like less. There's still the one task that says win array, but then there is like five different tasks only instead of the 10 that we used to do for only five pocket coins. So okay. it, it kind of actually helped out a lot in that sense. Um, people are, eh, I don't want to say like super happy about it, but they are at least more content than having to know that you don't have to do insanely amount of tasks for five extra Poké Coins and then have to, you know, defend so many gems at one point to, you know, just get the extra 50 you need, of course, you know, so... Mm. <laughs> I mean, I gotta say, the fact that they raised the Poké Coins to six per hour, that's already a huge improvement. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely can see the bonus of being able to get 20 without even having to um, leave the home for the most part. Because yes, we do have uh, the raid passes that let you raid from home, but that's not really going to help you too much when you're using more Poké Coins than you're earning. But Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um... Luckily enough, things are still in their, you know, quarantine gameplay. Uh, I yeah. feel like, I feel like, so this is maybe something that we can talk about um, right now because I didn't put it in the, in the actual notes or the show notes for this, but it's more like, mm -hmm. do you think that this quarantine gameplay that we're having will be ending in the next month or so? I don't think it's going to end until, as a whole, mm -hmm. the government says everything is fine. Right. And obviously, they're not, like, freaking out right now. But I think that they're waiting for somebody to say something and nobody's saying anything yet. Right. And uh, calming down completely. <laughs> yeah, so... If you go okay, so if you go to the today's view in Pokemon Go, you'll see that the special bonuses we have from the quarantine, you know, things that we we had since the, since this whole thing started, has been extended mm -hmm. to the end of this month. Uh, you know, in double uh, or time times in, in sense uh, duration, increase in sense effectiveness, opening as many gifts and receiving as many gifts uh, or holding many gifts. No battle, no walking requirement in Go Battle League. Half a, uh, half distance X. And then boosted damage for trainers battling in remote raiding, uh, which we knew. Okay, so every time we go at the end of the month, every time has mm -hmm. happened that they extended that this kind of bonuses. But people have been talking how the player is going to adapt to. Uh, hold on, <laughs> how the player is going to adapt to. <clears throat> 
the old rebacks of this. Um, the best way to say it is like how we're gonna go back to normal in this game after experiencing mm-hmm. this kind of bonuses for such a long time. You know, it's like oh, it's been three months since this boss has been active. It's gonna be almost four by the time we actually finish them. Are we gonna go back to just having like mediocre incest spawns? Are we gonna go back to having only to hold ten gifts and only setting twenty at a time? Are we gonna, uh, you know, do all those things that, or open twenty? I'm sorry, uh, I meant to say that. Um, what about remote raiding? You know, we we still have to boost it on remote raiders. We don't have to use many people to do level ones or twos anymore. We may need more people to help us out. I know invitations are coming, which we'll talk about in just a second too. Um, but all these type of bonuses we have, these special bonuses, do you think that is actually hindering or kind of like making the player more entitled to have them instead of actually going back to what they used to be? I think the fact that Niantic has already be- been very clear that this is a short term thing mm-hmm. and they're not like extending it to like the largest it can be and then pulling it away quicker. Right. They're they're like telling us by the month, okay, you have till now, and then they're extending it by the month. Mm-hmm. I think that's a really good idea for them because it's not like they're taking away anything. They're giving us more. It makes us happier uh, instead of making us sadder when they just pulled away randomly. Um, so when it does eventually end, it's definitely going to be at the end of the month, I feel like. Um, but I feel like they're going to give us a bigger heads up than just it ending without us having a clue. So I'm not I, sure though. I've been listening to a lot of different people about this topic. Um, Lure mm-hmm. up, uh, Goldcast, uh, everything else out there. And even uh, like the trainer club actually made a video specifically about this kind of bonuses. And I'm just like, okay, this actually seems interesting. However, because we're such good players quote-unquote good players um or a good community <laughs> sure uh we understand that you know we're gonna be raging about everything that's gonna happen in the game no matter what and that's why we rant about this in the pokemon in, the, in this podcast anyways because we're passionate man. <laughs> we're passionate yeah we're passionate about it now uh, i wouldn't mind going back because our experience and how things were before you know the quarantine started you know, having to grind for the experience, the Stardust, the uh, different rays, things like that, that, you know, Pokemon Go really built upon since day one. And I was like, okay, oh, yeah. it's, it's understandable. And I know a lot of players can come up with this at the same time. However, there are many players who just started playing this game because of being quarantined. And they were like, okay, I have nothing else to do. Let's play Pokemon Go and let's try this game for the first time. They have experienced this type of bonuses since day one from their gameplay. So how do you how do you actually like implement a system where you're gonna have the older player base happy while the newer player base doesn't get screwed over? I mean, you know what I think is gonna happen mm. is they're gonna make you have to do everything the old way, and half of the players are just gonna stop. Right. The other half of the players might like it enough to kind of adjust their play style to follow ours right um, now which i don't think is that crazy right now there is one thing that other people are saying let's meet everybody at the middle of this don't take away so many of the bonuses we have but also mm-hmm. you know make it the requirement of what pokemon go has built on since the beginning so it really depends on what kind of bonuses could stay that will be really helpful in in the community now Incenses maybe could be a little bit better. I do feel like the 30 second every spawn is kind of like nuts because you can barely even catch one of the Pokemons every now and then and then just go to the next one. Maybe, you know... Especially if it pops out a few times. Yeah. Right. Maybe time it out to 45 seconds or something like that. Uh, definitely not every five minutes because every five minutes actually like takes you longer, especially if you're sitting in one place. Um, yeah. It's insane. It's insane. Like, just waiting for yeah. it to come. Yeah. Or um, if you're walking around, of course, you'll have more spawns. But, you know, that really is what the core mechanic of the game is, you know, walking around. Yeah. So yeah. that's one of the bonuses. Like, maybe another bonus will be the gift system. Let us hold that amount of gifts again. Let us keep the amount of gifts we're getting. Let us keep 20. Let us send 40 or open 40 or whatever is the amount that they, they want us to do. Because... As many times as we want to, having 200, pl- 200 friends or more, depending on what they, they decide to do in the later future, um, 
it's kind of ridiculous that we can only open so many gifts, especially when we want to grind like egg events or something like that. You know, you can only open 20 gifts, send 10 or, or hold Don't 10. Don't get me started. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, and then, you know, having the egg pool never actually show up because you can never get an egg or something. Uh, let us at least keep that kind of feature because it's just nice to have it uh, in that sense. You know, you'll you'll still be able to, you know, if you open as many gifts, you'll still be getting more money, Niantic. You understand this. You will be hatching more eggs for that reason. We got to use incubators, <laughs> yeah. man. We got to use incubators. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> now, something that it's really going to be interesting if they actually do uh, take away some of these features will be the walking requirements for Go Battle League. Since we know that Go Battle League is supposed to actually require us to walk a certain amount of kilometers to, un to get a battle set ready, do you think that this is also going to like stop the players from doing Go Battle League? Now, again, meet us at the middle, Niantic. Don't take it all away, but still implement it. Like I understand that's how the feature works, but don't make us walk three kilometers to be able to unlock them. maybe like 1.5 kilometers or something similar to that or two kilometers. One Some... kilometer, yeah. <laughs> One kilometer is probably cutting a little in, too in close. In the middle. In the middle, in right? The middle. <laughs> That's why I said 1.5. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, so, it's just it's just making sure that the feature still functions the way it's supposed to, but you know, still making the players better. Now, Chris, I'm sure you have very much to say about this, this feature. I have a much. lot of thoughts. <laughs> um, something I've heard a lot is a lot of the people, even the people that PvP a lot and love Go Battle League, they get burnt out doing all of them at once. Mm -hmm. So I kind of understand them wanting to kind of uh, put them in sets based on how many kilometers you walk. Right. It kind of it stops you from getting burnt out at it all at once. Right. Some people love it. I don't know. It's yeah. all up to you. Personally, I don't like doing them all at once because it, it, it's just a lot of battles to do, honestly. Yeah, definitely. Um, if, if you think yeah. about it, if you do all your sets at once and go battle league, it's like doing a full tournament so a full tournament every single day. Like, if you go to the South yeah. Arena, you actually do a tournament, a four-round tournament. It will take you the same amount of time to do that many rounds to do as the go battle league sets. So well, that's more fun for me because I, I don't feel like it comes down to luck a lot of the time. Yeah, but, then think, again, but if, know, you're doing, if you're doing two hours worth of battles, let's say you're doing two hours worth of battles. Every that's like day. every day is you're every doing day. a gold battle league silt arena tournament every single day. <laughs> and imagine that. I mean, we have time when we do silt arena, we have time to analyze, time to work our battles, practice, things like that. You know, we have time to relax and do a thing, different things. But if you're doing it every single day, if you're doing a go a Celt Arena tournament every single day, wouldn't you be burned out too? Well, I know, I know a lot of people try to rush through the battles too. Like as soon as they think, oh, there's no way I can pull out a win, just well, quit out. Well, yeah, quit. that you never see that in Celt. But... Never. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about that in 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 our PvP section for sure. But there's more to oh, to yeah. it than to that. But. That's what I'm saying, you know, it's it's making sure that we can meet them halfway or they can meet us halfway when we come to those special bonuses, you know. Sure. So we'll for see, sure. we'll see. Niantic probably has something in plan for us. Um, I'm thinking because it's the end of spring and the beginning of summer is when they want us to go back to, you know, regular gameplay. But at least they'll know, you know, that the, the difficulties of it. Now, something like the half distance, it's, it's a nice addition. I love having to hatch a two kilometer arc only by walking one kilometer. I love doing yeah. all of the super curious things, but I understand that this is a feature that needs to go back to what it used to be. Two kilometers, five kilometers, 10 kilometers, seven kilometers, whatever the egg the eggs that you have. You need, we needed that, that we need that type of um, going back to it in, in the regular basis. I understand some people will be mad about it, but it really doesn't help if you're, you know, hatching eggs, at a half distance all the time. Although we can hatch us more and pay us more to Niantic, it doesn't really help out that much, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think those kind of bonuses can be revamped to help us, the newer players, the older players, whoever the hard hardcore grinder or the um, the closest would be. I do think that we can actually, like, be better if they actually extend things like that. And Julie, I do see you back there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no worries, no worries. It will be fine. <laughs> All right. 
So that's what we have on that whole bonuses thing. We'll see how it goes until the end of the month. Uh, we got around 60 more days technically on it, and maybe they'll extend them, maybe not. We'll see how you know Pokemon Go or Niantic tech tell us about it. So now that we rant about this, because we I didn't put it in part of the show notes, let's talk about the next piece of news that we have, Chris. Oh, yes. Weedle Community Day coming up. Oh, Very soon. Yeah. So... As you guys know, the poll uh, for the next Community Day Pokemon was announced last month. Uh, we did have that throughout the entire uh, live stream. We were able to vote. Whittle came up on top. Ghastly number two. So we'll have Whittle as the June Community Day. Now, they have come back to say that this is a Community Day. This is not a home edition Community Day. Uh, but really? on Saturday, June 20, which is actually this next Saturday coming up, from 11 a.m. 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. local time, you'll be able to experience the appearance of Weedle appearing more in the wild. Kakuna evolving or evolving Kakuna to Weedle or Weedle. What am I talking about? <laughs> Beedrill. <laughs> During the event, up to two hours afterwards, will run its drill run exclusive move. Uh, tech special na- or s- snap chops to see a surprise. And then there will be a one-time purchase June Community Day bundle featuring an elite Charge TM, 30 Ultra Balls, 3 Star Pieces, and 3 Incense. The bonuses, though, is the best part of this announcement. Which will be 3 times car Catch Star Dust. Dust! I'm super hyped. I'm <sighs> super hyped. We better get Weather Boost, please. please. Uh, we'll hope for a, a nice cloudy weather here in Florida. So... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's gonna happen. Come it's, on, yeah. It's so been ready all week. they did also said that, of course, there will be no live stream this time around. There will only be the June Community Day. Um, it's Good. still, it's still the bonuses of like incest activating during the event will last three hours. Your body Pokemon will bring you, more, um, you know, Pokeballs and items to help you out through your adventure. Which a lot of people were saying that was broken throughout the uh, the Community Day last week or last month. Uh, for the first three hours that your body never brought you any Pokeballs, which was hindering the players. But then um, the Pokemon actually started getting more Pokeballs in the last three hours of the event. So uh, it was kind of like win and lose, depending on what it is. But this time around, they still they didn't announce, you know, the body will, will help you out through it. Uh, Super. And of course, they did say, with all that said, who's ready for com- Widow Community today? Let's go Harry Buck Pokemon fans. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I mean, Harry Pug. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. We'll we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> but yeah, so that is the full announcement, of course, of uh, our June community day Weedle Pokemon. The shiny is kind of nice. It's kind of neat. Um, but I do feel like we need um more now. In the data mine, they did uh, uh APK mine from the data miners, of course. They did find out the code for the Harry situation um quest and. Interestingly enough, they did not announce it in their blog post for the community today, which usually when there is something like that, they will tell you, hey, there is this special thing, the uh, ticketed event that yeah. you can do for, you know, 99 cents. Uh, you'll encounter Widow a little bit more and help Will, uh, Willow through his research on Widow. But interestingly enough, they didn't announce that. And people are actually asking why if we kind of already knew. Well, we're not supposed to know, but you know, guys, this is this is uh, Pokemon Go. So <laughs> it's very interesting. Yeah, I'm curious if either a they're waiting till last second, mm-hmm. or maybe they're gonna be like, "Oh, this is your punishment. You guys don't get it anymore, ha! Huh? We're trying to lose out on money. <laughs> Joke on you." Well, I don't it's not like they're really losing a lot. They're more like you know they're expanding on it, but. Either way, I understand. <laughs> um, maybe they'll announce it in the next few days. We don't know. This is another week of Pokemon Go that we're going to go through, of course. And we'll, of course, let you know of our experiences once Sunday oh, yeah. comes around. Anyways, anyhow, so uh, this next one is a little bit, well, not interesting. It's more like I understandable. Uh, this continue of the 32-bit Android devices in Pokemon Go. So Pokemon Go has announced that some devices in Android will not be working Pokemon Go anymore. Exclusively, the 32-bit devices, uh, which include Samsung Galaxy S4, S5, Note 3, J3, which I didn't even think that was a thing. <laughs> uh, Sony Xperia C2 and Z3. 
Motorola Moto G first generation and many Android devices released before 2015. Now, guys, if you are a Pokemon Go player with those devices, make sure that you do upgrade. Now, I'm not telling you to spend money to just play Pokemon Go, but if you really love the game, you gotta upgrade soon because by the uh, I think it's by the beginning of August on to, and this year that's when they will discontinue those devices and unfortunately Pokemon Go yep. will now run in those devices once that it goes live so um, that update will be coming out in August uh, yeah rip to those guys Anima you are right on that <laughs> I'm thinking about all the people with old phones yeah yeah um, think about all the phones they have dude five phones they gotta switch out. <laughs> Well, I mean, they remember the uh, the multi accounters. They they have like um, many phones from all, but you can still roll Pokemon Go even though it's like laggy as it ever can be. <laughs> um, yeah. But I know for sure that this will help out. You know, make the game a little bit better. They don't have to worry about the support in different devices, and Good they point. have done this in the past with different type of devices, uh, notably a couple of Apple devices like Apple Apple iPhone. Uh, four and I, uh, iPhone five. They actually discontinued those devices to support Pokemon Go. So, I know it's not an uncommon thing to see, but again, because you know the world always technologically advances all this time, you will always see a, a decrease on those devices. Because unfortunately, I mean, the game can only run so well in the, some in the devices, and then once new features come around, that's going to be interesting. Um. Thank you so much, the Water Bolt, for uh, following me on Twitch. <laughs> welcome to the stream and welcome to the Purifer Podcast, uh, our Sunday's beautiful podcast, of course. We actually have quite a bit of people watching on Twitch, which is surprising. <laughs> uh, I'm happy about that. Thank you so much for joining me, guys, for sure. Uh, we are the Pure Purifer Podcast. We are watching so much. We are trying to talk all things Pokemon Go, but uh, you guys will probably know that, of course. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so make sure that if you want to keep playing Pokemon Go, upgrade your devices. If you are holding on some devices, all devices, make sure you know you you can upgrade them through your um, career. <laughs> ASAP. 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 Well, you got a couple months, so you got time to save up if you need to. All right, so uh, <laughs> let's talk about our next piece of research topic, Chris. If you... The Solstice and Bug Out event. The event details have I'm been out. excited for half of it. Half of it? What do you mean half of it? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, as you guys know, last week they announced that uh, Pokemon Go will have both the Solstice event and his um, Bug Out event happening this month. So, now the details have been actually fully revealed, so we'll let you guys know what you need to expect so, as Pokemon Go stated, Shiny Clefairy arrives and Lunatone and Sodor will be changing regions during the Solstice theme event. What do you mean? What do you mean, <laughs> Chris? <laughs> Tony by Solrock, man. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. God. Now I understand why you're only half of this ready for this. <laughs> exactly. I'm really excited for Clefairy. Uh, oh, my God. Okay, so celebrate the days... <laughs> Okay, so to celebrate the days getting longer in the Northern Hemisphere and the nights doing the same in the Southern Hemisphere, Pokemon Go Solstice Team events will be coming back. Ready? Get ready for Shiny Clefairy and more. Why do you want me to say this twice? <laughs> so the event will run on June 19, on Friday, June 19, from 8 a.m. to Wednesday, June 24 at 10 p.m. local time. So it actually starts this Friday, which is nice. Um, so Pokemons associated with the sun and moon, including Clefairy, Sunken, and more, will be appearing more frequently in the wild, hatching from 5k eggs and appearing after completing event exclusive field research tasks and appearing in race. Really, why do you put two ends? Come on, guys. <laughs> if you're lucky, you might encounter a shiny Clefairy. Previously, you could get a shiny Clefairy only by hatching a shiny Clefa and evolving it, so this will be the first time you have a chance to encounter a shiny Clefairy in the wild. Yeah. You know so, why this is amazing? What? Shiny Clefairy into Clefable for <laughs> PvP. Yeah. <laughs> so I do have two Shiny Clefas here. <laughs> flexing, flexing. <laughs> yeah, I do need them better IBs though. Because... It's my stream now. now <laughs> what do you mean is your stream? It's our podcast. <laughs> 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 but yeah, Shiny Clefairy. So. Uh, actually, around this time, when Pokemon Go Fest was uh, happening in 2019, 
Shaniko Fairy got released in the wild for like eh, the mistake from Pokemon Go, of course. Now, yep. I don't know how that translates a year later to finally release it into the wild. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> better late than never? Uh, okay, Even better late. came early? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So, Shiny Clefairy technically was a rare catch if you caught it in the wild, while Shiny Clefa was only in eggs, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But then, more to the event, of course. Throughout the event, Lunaton and Soldier will both be appearing in three star raids and hatching from five kilometer eggs regarding of your location. Lunaton and Sora will appear in the wild in different regions. See the schedule to for the details. So on Friday, um, Friday June 19 and a.m. to Saturday June 20 at 11, um, or actually almost at noon or uh, midnight, uh, Lunaton will be appearing more frequently in the wild in the eastern hemisphere, and Sora will appear more in the western hemisphere. Hopefully, I got those right between right and left. <laughs> Uh, from Sunday June twenty <laughs> Sunday June twenty first at twelve a.m. to Monday June twenty second. That's only two days. <laughs> uh, local time. Uh, Lunatone and Sora will be appearing more frequently in a while everywhere. So we only have a twenty four hour period for that one. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. And then yeah. Tuesday, June 23rd at 12 a.m. to Wednesday, June 24 at 10 p.m. local time, Lunaton and Sora will appear, will be swapping hemispheres. Lunaton will appear more oh. frequently in the wild in the Western Hemisphere, and the Sora will be appearing more in the Eastern Hemisphere. So, uh, looks like after, for the last uh, day, they will be switching regions, which is kind of nice, but I feel but this is the final part of the of that. It says once the event is over, Lunaton will stay in the Western Hemisphere and Sora will stay in the Eastern Hemisphere. So that means Chris. I gotta say, I'm a lot more excited. Yeah, I'm gonna be hunting that Sora boy. Yeah, so oh Chris, you better be hunting this event because if once he's gone, he is gone for another year, or at least whatever time. Maybe longer. Gonna, maybe longer because it's been a. Uh, a good year and a half since, uh, or a good year or so since. Too long, yeah. Yeah, since Sol Rock and Lunatone switched places the first time around. So we do know that it is time for us to be able to catch the other side of it. Now, if you weren't, if you had a Safari Zone ticket for St. Louis, you were able to actually, or was it Liverpool? One of the two. Either way, you were able to actually, you know, spawn Lunatones in your area, and of course, you can get a shiny. Everybody was looking for it. Uh, because it's one of those rare shinies you want, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah but, it's a beauty. but, of course, I do have my soul rock, so I'll definitely be going hard on Lunatone. <laughs> I know Chris is just like, man, flex it out, man. Flex it out. I'm trying not to think about it. <laughs> so, uh, bonuses for this event will be two times scotch Stardust. So, once again, we have another Stardust event coming around. Guys, make sure you have those star pieces ready. Because we are uh, in for some nice little dust. <laughs> uh, That's a good one. So, aside from that event, Chris, we have another event that has details announced. And this will be the Bagel event featuring Shiny Dubble. I don't know how to say that name. <laughs> Dwebble. Thank you. <laughs> So, Dwebble, okay, when, how can I spell that? Of course, because it's a W first. So, Dwebble will get a shiny form. Maybe I can actually evolve one once again once I get the shiny, so I can get a shiny dex entry. I don't have Ooh. the other evolution yet, so that's pretty nice. That's pretty hype, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, shiny Dwebble is out. So, now, get your incest ready, the bag of events. It's coming later this month. This will be the perfect opportunity for you to work on your bug catcher medal, and you might even count it in shiny Dwebble. On Friday, June 26, by the time the other event ends, of course, at 8 a.m. to Wednesday, July 1st at 10 p.m. local time, the features will be bag of Pokemons, including Scyther, Benipede, and Dwebble, will appear more frequently in the wild, hatching from 5 AKAs, appearing in event field research tasks, and appearing in raids. If you're lucky, you might encounter the shiny. More bug uh, type Pokemons will be attracted to incense. Certain bug type Pokemons will appear more often than others, depending on the day you use your uh, incense. So on Friday, June 26 at 8 a.m. to Saturday, June 27 at 12 p.m. local time, Ninkada will appear more often on incense. 
Yeah, Ninkada, another shiny I need. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, you got one, didn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I may have two. Let me check. Ah, okay, lucky try me then. <laughs> Uh, from Sunday, <laughs> from uh, Sunday June twenty eighth at twelve a.m. to Monday June twenty nine at twelve p.m. or a little bit one day, one hour before, uh, Wormpole will be attracted to uh, to more often to incest. So that's actually pretty nice. I actually want more Wormpole shinies to be able to uh, evolve them because I never really get the evolutions. <laughs> yeah, I don't even have one yet. Yeah, um, I'm gonna be going ham on all of them. Oh yeah, definitely. I need I need both of them, but I do have the worm pole from uh, from the party hat, so that one will stay a worm pole. <laughs> That's kind of nice. I do need more because I need you know beautifly and um, duskal duster one of the two. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Oxygen. Yeah. So, uh, from and then Tuesday, uh, from Tuesday, June thirtieth to July first, uh, Scyther will be attracted more often in in incense. So I need another one for a uh, for a shiny evolution, but that would be nice to have if we actually get it. Oh yeah. And then this bonuses of this time will be the two times catch experience. So once again, if you are uh, nearing level forty or about to hit level forty, make sure you get those lucky eggs ready. However, that is not the last piece of news that we have on this one. As previously mentioned in the APKs, Pincer Ray Day has been announced. On Saturday, June 28th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. local time, three-star Ray featuring Pincer will be occurring more frequently. Be sure to have your remote Ray passes stock and regular Ray passes. Uh, you can buy them in the shop. There will also be a one Pokemon coin bundle available to fe featuring three remote Ray passes. So uh, let's get ready for that because I'm never gonna use the ray pa the remote ray passes for Pinsir. <laughs> Niantic, as much as it's I love free ray <laughs> as much as I love you, Niantic, and that's exaggerating actually. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think I ever want to do a Pinsir raid unless there's some kind of like overpower PVP move that's gonna feature us. So. <laughs> Um, I can't think of anything it would get that would make it like worthwhile. Definitely, to be honest. Yeah. So even in Ultra League, even in Ultra League, that is true. So yeah, that is our research topics, Chris. Are you excited for any of them? Um, I'd say the biggest. I don't, I don't know. The last two are the biggest hype for sure, because um. I'm always a shiny hunter. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I'm definitely also a shiny hunter myself. So there are many. Definitely Lunatone is going to be one. Community Day is coming up pretty soon. So that's also a nice little addition. I'll definitely see if I can do something. Maybe on stream or off stream. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, maybe three hours outside, three hours in. I got to take. I gotta get some uh, equipment done soon. So Because I'm going to be reinventing my broom soon too. So... <laughs> Anywho, anyhow, anyway, that is the research topics for today. But then we have our get good, get wreck PvP section. Here we go, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, what a week. What, what a, a week. week. Yes. So, as a mess of Ultra League happening in Pokemon Go Battle League, or in Pokemon Go Go Battle League, there's been a, uh, a uh, what you might call it, a... Skeeter? Mm, disturbance in the force if you want to go more uh, Star Wars defense since <laughs> um, but yeah as Chris has mentioned uh, we'll actually be talking about the problem the Go Battle League has actually been happening in the last few days and that is that right now the Go Battle League is shut down because of a certain exploit that uh, Niantic has addressed since um, it's been implemented so uh, what is this exploit you guys are looking for well we only know the details from what we've seen on the social medias uh, however this exploit actually grants the player a way to charge in your charge moves way quicker than you might expect in a regular battle it's insane it is an insane now many people or at least a lot of pokemon go players that stream has actually encountered this specific uh, exploit with somebody and that name is jesus in the go battle league <laughs> There's more to that to the, his name. I just can't remember the entire name, of course. Um, now, he, for some reason, shot up into the leaderboard to number one in the world um, a couple of days ago. And he was only doing 
less than 300 battles and he was already close to the rank 10 while many of the other players or at least the go battle players barely even got to 2800 and they're fighting for that one number one spot so people yeah. were checking that out they were saying how is this possible how are you promoting somebody who's done less battles but has a higher rank rating it's that wasn't the problem really the problem was the way he was actually using the system ex exploiting the go battle league to implement himself to more wins more than losses of course his win loss ratio probably is like almost 100 percent at this point um but that's the, that's the problem that, that Go Battle League faced since the beginning of that. And Niantic quickly addressed that this is an exploit. We won't, we're won't. we going down until further notice. Because unfortunately, they don't know. I feel like they don't know how to fix this yet. But it's been, what, four, uh, two, three days already? I think it's been two days. Two days? Yeah. yeah. So since the announcement of the of the shutdown, if you go to Go Battle League right now and try to do a set, unfortunately, it is down. And there is no ending to this downtime. Um, we don't know when will they go back up. This actually, unfortunately, affects a lot of the players for two reasons. One, if you want to rank to rank 10, it's going to take you even harder time to actually get to that since the leaderboard has been reset and taken down the cheater from it. And then two, the timings of the Go Battle League. Before we had a specific time of when the season will end, will they extend that? Will they give us some more extra time? Will they delay Master League and Premier Cup? Um, that's the different things that we are questioning once Go Battle League comes back up. What kind of statement Niantic will do once they technically fix this exploit? Um, but that, unfortunately, has been the sad news of the Go Battle League, which... As much as I love Go Battle League, I mean, I'm not a hard grinder anymore. I used to when, you know, the first thing I first started. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, it's kind of sad that, you know, you can't go into your battles these days. You can't do anything. All the Well, the fact that nobody can. Yeah, yeah, the fact that nobody can, unfortunately. Because of one player. And one player specifically. So, um, don't worry. It will go back up. I'm sure Niantic is working very hard. It's just a weekend, too. So, I'm guessing that, they, you know, they needed some time to rest and do things different, differently but you know they this niantic works almost 24 hours seven days a week yeah they they, yes. they don't rest they want to make sure the game runs eventually for everybody in any day at shape or form uh so it's unfortunately a disgrace to see that one player causes such an epic impact to the pokemon go scene or the pokemon go battle scene so um i'm very interested to see how they figured out they could do the exploit but it's probably a good thing more people didn't know how. Yeah, it's definitely a good thing because if this exploit would have gone up to life, we don't even know at what point how many, you know, bands and cheaters will be out there to actually see. We understood there's many exploits that Go Battle League had before and Niantic has been very quick to address them in the last few in the last few times, but this one actually caught us by surprise. A lot of people were, you know, really surprised that something like this was happening in I don't know. I don't know. Just it, it kind of kind of sad to see a mechanic in the game shut down for just reasons. And uh, I'm sure they're working very hard to make sure that they can stabilize it and bring us back to what Go Battle League is supposed to be. So, so full glory will be back for sure. Now, I did want to actually do more battles with you, Chris. I do feel like, unfortunately, we are running out of time today. <laughs> but uh, also a few things to mention. Uh, Chris is actually... As I mentioned before in the last podcast, in his wild tournaments practices. So maybe we'll see Chris in the leaderboards of Silk Arena go uh, go battle. Not go battle league, but you know, Silk Arena. And let's wish him all the luck that we can, guys, because uh, I do want to see him compete with the very best and be the very best that no one ever was, of course. So, Chris. I uh, gotta say, it's scary, man. <laughs> yeah, but don't, I mean, pressure is on, but you know. Do what you always do, battle, practice, whatever you need to do, and then you'll see that, you know, maybe you'll go far in that, so. <laughs> so, yeah, Chris. Yeah. It is in Sorcerer's Cup, and I've been doing good in Sorcerer's Cup, mm -hmm. so we'll see, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll make you proud. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, and... Um, Many things to to come, of course. Uh, Celt Arena, of course, uh, still moving into 
his second week or second month of Go Battle or Go Battle League. I'm, I'm so into Go Battle League these days. Uh, there's mm-hmm. Sorcerer's Cup in June, of course. And if you guys want to get into that, make sure you check out CeltArena.gg. Uh, they will definitely be welcoming new players every time. And if you want to, you know, take away from the random battles, you want to see some some team battles. That's a, that's a place for you guys. So quick shout out to, of course, Celt Arena for such an amazing uh, place. <clears throat> but yeah, Chris, looks like that's it for our podcast today. Ooh, Ooh. It's been a fun one. Man. It's been a fun one. But of course, to uh, make sure that you guys are here and whoever is listening thank you so much for listening uh, we really appreciate you guys coming to the podcast in our live feeds of course on sundays at 8 p.m and of course if you're listening in on our podcast feeds you can listen us to apple podcast google podcast our heart radio stitcher and many more if you want to give us some information or tell us about your day of course or how you're playing pokemon go you can email us or at <laughs> you can email us at purifypodcast at gmail.com Text us or voice message us at 941-417-9243. We're definitely um, listening to all the voices, voice messages, if you guys send some. And then we'll definitely read all the emails out there. Now, before we end our usual podcast here, uh, I want to make sure that you guys are actually following us on our social media. You can also join us on our Discord. Uh, However, tomorrow there is a special announcement that we'll be making around 12 o'clock. Uh, so make sure you guys are ready for that. There is a special announcement that Pokemon, that this podcast is going to be implementing. Uh, but if you want to hear more about it, definitely check us out tomorrow on our social medias. Myself, of course, at Pure Let It Go. And then Chris, you at... Christo0517. And definitely check us out, guys. We'll definitely be putting it in, in any social media in our Discord, of course, so you guys can see where we're coming from. It's going to be an awesome announcement. But Chris, you got anything else to say today? Uh, you know, just uh, keep keep getting XP, keep getting Stardust, you know. <laughs> Try to catch up with me in PvP. You'll be Ooh. good. <laughs> He's calling you out, guys. He's calling you out. But Chris, I want to thank you so much for joining us for today's podcast. And of course, it's been a fun one, man. And of course, everybody out there. Uh, we'll see you, of course, definitely, guys, next week. Chris, take it away. <laughs> it's been a really good week. Uh, hopefully, it gets better next week. I'm assuming it will with all the new shinies we'll be getting. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, uh, you know, keep optimistic. Get those shinies. Send them to us. Hope you guys have a good one. Peace out. Have a good night. <laughs>